Hello everybody. Today I thought I'd take the time to create a tutorial video on how we can use CurseForge to create an online multiplayer server along with how to share it with your friends. First thing you're going to want to do is launch CurseForge. From here you can choose whether or not you want to browse mod packs and choose one that is already created or create one yourself with mods that only you and your friends want to play. To create a custom mod pack you'll want to create custom profile at the top. Choose a profile name and what version of Minecraft and Forge or Fabric that you want to use. Today we're going to be using 1.16.5 on version of Forge 36.2.0. From there you'll click the icon, click add more content, and then install whatever mods you'd like to play. Once you've chosen all the mods you'd like to play, we can go ahead and minimize this for now. Go on your desktop, right click, hover over a new, click folder, then we're going to name this custom server 1.16.5. Once you have that ready, we're going to need to go install the version of Forge that we just chose, which once again is 36.2.0. Then we will go onto the Forge website. I will leave a link in the description. Choose the version of Minecraft that you're on. And now we need to find the version of Forge. As you can see, there is latest and recommended. We chose 36.2.0, which is right here. If for some reason you chose one that are not listed up here at the top, you can click Show All Versions, scroll down, and then find which version you chose. From there, we'll click Installer. We will wait for this ad to end. After five seconds, we are then able to click Skip Ad. And then from there at the bottom of the screen, it will show an install icon for Forge. We will click that and launch it. We're going to want to use Java SE binary. Now once we're at this spot right here, we're going to want to install server. Then we're going to want to go and find the new folder that we had just created on our desktop. From there we can click OK. It will then install all the libraries required to run Forge. Alright, once it is finished, we can then click OK. It'll automatically exit out. We'll want to go and we'll want to launch the server first to go ahead and add any of the folders that we are missing before. You'll notice that it won't start anything, but there will be a eula.txt. You want to go there and you'll want to change the false to true. File, save, exit out of that, and then we can then start forge again. From there, you'll notice that it is taking longer to load. This time, it will be starting a server up, along with making a world and mods folder. From there, we'll just wait for the server to finish. Once it is done, we can then type in stop. And it will automatically close out of that. From there, we'll go back to CurseForge and find the custom mod pack that we just created. We'll click Open Folder. As you'll see, there is a mods folder in here. That mods folder, we are going to copy and we're going to transition it over to the custom server that we just made. Alright, now that our mods folder is now over here, we can then try to launch the server one more time. Make sure that everything still starts properly. There are a couple of reasons on why it could not start. One being a mismatched mod, in case you needed 
say, an extra configuration mod that we did not add into it to begin with. But in this case, it does look like everything launched properly. Now this tutorial does assume that you have already port forwarded and have an IP address ready for the server properties. Once you've done that, you will scroll down to your server IP, type in whatever IP address it is that you're port forwarding, and then type in whichever port you're on. Default is 25565. If you're mul running multiple servers off of one router, you will have different ports. While still in the server's properties folder, I do recommend scrolling to the top and changing allow flight to true. Changing the difficulty for me, I always change it to hard, but for this case, we'll leave it on easy. And if you decide that you want a custom seed, you can type it right here. Then you'll click file and save. Then you can exit out of that. If you did change the server seed, go ahead and delete the world folder. It will make a new one with the new seed that you have added. And then from here, I always like to rename the forge.jar into whatever the name of our server is. So I'm going to name it custom.jar. Then you'll right click, new, text document, and we're going to name this start.txt. Once you've created the start.txt file, you'll open it up. Inside of here, you're going to want to type at echo off java dash capital X M S this is going to be the minimum amount of RAM that you want allocated into the server in my computer I have 32 gigs of RAM and I want to dedicate about 16 gigs to it so I'm gonna make it to where it always uses 1000 megabytes of memory and then X capital X M X is going to be the max amount of RAM that it can use and for this since I want to do about 16, I'm going to type in 1796. That should either round up or down to either 16 or 17. I didn't do the exact math on this. Megabytes. So that's going to be about 16 gigabytes. Then you'll do dash jar. And then whatever you chose to name your forge jar, if you even change the name at all, is going to be what we type in next. Since I did custom. I'm going to type in custom.jar and then I'm going to type in n-o-g-u-i then pause. From here you're going to click file, save as and then you're going to change the dot text to dot bat. Click enter, it will save for you and you'll see that you have a new bat file. Now you'll try to start this. It should go into a command prompt. And from here, you'll be able to see your server start as normal as though you just double click the jar file. The only thing that this changed is change the amount of RAM that is allocated inside of our server. And as you can see here, it is re-rendering our server from where we changed all of the server properties and changed the world seed. Now our server is done and we have finished that. So we have now created a server using CurseForge with our own mods that we chose to add with a custom world. Now when you want to share it with your friends, what you'll do is you'll go back to CurseForge. You'll click the three bar icon. You're going to hit export file or profile. It's going to ask you what all you want to add. Really, mods and configuration are the only two that you'll ever want to change to export. In this case I don't have a configuration file I only have the mods file which is okay. Then you'll click export. You can name it whatever you'd like. It's gonna automatically choose whatever the name of the world that you did and do a zip file. You'll click save, minimize out of this and you'll see over here that we now have a custom zip file. Now most of the time these are small enough these only are only a couple kilobytes in size Inside of this, you'll see a manifest, which tells us what mods we have, along with any overrides. And there is a mod list that you can click on. Now, as you can tell, there's nothing you can really do with the zip file just yet. But considering it is such a small file, it's pretty easy to send it along Discord or to any of your friends through maybe email if you still use that. Once they have received that, what you'll do is you'll go back to Curse. What they'll do is they'll go to CurseForge. 
they'll click create custom profile import a previously created profile and then they'll click on the zip file that you sent once they've done that it will download everything that they have done and then they're able to just click play and type in the server address that you've made thanks for watching to the end of the video this was my first YouTube video ever you can like and subscribe if you like but the most useful thing for me to start off with is going to be comments if you'd like give me any advice you want any extra videos or more tutorials that you'd like to see really anything inside of the comments I will read and I will take to heart to try to change and make my content better but once again thanks for watching and you'll have a wonderful rest of your day